Lee, the talented Samara Sin to the Hatrix. Let's go one time. Hey, Samara. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> what is going on, Samara Sin? How you doing on this uh, fine Friday? I'm doing good. I got my workout in this morning. Um, I've been chilling. I ate before I came on here. I've been cracking up the beginning of your show. So I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling good. <laughs> okay. I, I seen you in the gym. You doing, uh, what you doing? Yoga, Pilates? What's, what's going on? Man, I ain't doing no yoga, Pilates. <laughs> so I'm playing with <laughs> Nah, um, shout out to Cliff Gibson, actually. Um, I've been training with him just for the past week. It's the beginning of something. Um, we've trained before, but um, I had to take a break during the holidays. I'm traveling a lot, and so I'm back, and uh, he's been kicking my ass. So, <laughs> that's yeah. what's, what's, your, what's your goals? Is, is it just health as well? For like, what, what's your goals? What are you trying to achieve in the gym? Are you just out there? you just a fitness junkie? Um, I'm not a fitness junkie, good God. <laughs> um, I used to be an athlete when I was like mm. a kid, you know what I'm saying? Like when I was a teen. And so um, like that's not far removed, but uh, I think I just, I've been trying to tap into like higher self, you know what I'm saying? I've been trying to tap into um, like showing that I'm ready to like graduate to the next part of uh, my life, I guess. And so mm -hmm. um, self-discipline is a part of that. And working out is like another way to prove to myself that I can create a routine and I can be self-disciplined. You know awesome. what I'm saying? So, yeah, I up. like structure. I'm a Virgo. Um, Are you a Virgo? Oh, yeah. my <laughs> son, Virgo on their dog ass. <laughs> the cash app is open. Hey. He's uh he's super structured. He he got to have his toys over here and toys over here and, and the Minecraft dollars over here. Yeah, Virgo's um super super structured. Grounded. Yeah, grounded uh, for sure. Yeah. When you say tap into your, to your higher self, um, what el what else does that mean? Like tap into your to your higher self. Um, I think like. I had to, I don't think we ask ourselves enough. I've had this conversation with a lot of my friends. I don't think we ask ourselves enough, like what our values are and like what type of person we want to be. Mm. And so um, I had somebody kind of like pose the question to me and I was like, dang, like I've never really thought about that. You know what I mean? Like we, we feel like we have a sense of it, but like until we really ask ourselves, like it's kind of hard to answer that question. So um so I had to start thinking about like what the best version of myself looked like. And that's who I call my higher self. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is the best version of me? Is it sitting here laying in bed doing what I'm doing? Like, nah, I want to tap in. I want to be healthy. I want to eat healthy. And I want to, you know, I want to tap into my craft and like expand. I don't just want to write a good song. I want to make good music and I want to produce and I want to, you know what I mean? Play instruments and things like that. So um, in order for me to, get what I where I'm trying to go I have to show whether you call it God or the universe or your own higher self whatever mm. it is I have to show that I'm ready for that and so I need to be operating as the best version of myself in order to do that do you do you believe in um like the transferring of energy like the energy that you put out in the world and is the energy that you get back yes yep and I also feel like yeah yeah no i definitely do i believe in spreading love and positivity mm. in any way shape or form you know what i mean like um i don't know I, I was talking to um a good friend of mine as well um about kind of like what my passion is and um i came to the realization that i think my passion is just being of service mm. and um and that's in whatever I do, whether it be music or just like being a friend or being a daughter or being a sister, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I feel like all of that stuff you put out and you don't expect anything back from right. it. You continue being a good person. You continue being not just to other people, but to yourself. You continue to respect yourself. You're operating as the best version of yourself. Then it's going to come because you're ready for it. You're showing that you're ready for that to come into your life. And you're prepared for it when it comes so that you can show out. You don't fumble the bag. 100. 100. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's start. Let's start at the uh the, the beginning. Um I always I always ask this every time I interview somebody. Um when when did you know when when did you know like damn I'm motherfucking nice at this rap shit? Like when, when, when did it click to you that you like one day, was you just in a lab one day? Cause Biggie, <laughs> when Biggie recorded, um, 
I believe uh, I forgot that song with Diddy he recorded. Uh, but he sat back in his chair and he was like, I'm the motherfucking goat. Like at that point, he was like, God damn, I'm, I'm the goat. When did you know, like, okay, I'm nice at this rap shit? Damn. That's okay. That's kind of tough because I don't think it was like one defining moment. There yeah. have been times where it's like, maybe I'm not there yet. I don't know. Um, there have been times where I'm like, oh, like, nigga, this shit is hard. Like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm being here all the time. I'm like, oh, see you call. Like, I can't believe you just wrote that shit. Um, but I still feel like there's so much more for me to do in like practice yeah. and things like that. Like, I definitely my goal is to be the most well-renowned um, songwriter that there ever was or mm. of my time. Mm. So I'm trying to Neo this bitch. I want to, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like I want to, I want to be in that like realm of like notable people. So um, there's a lot more that I have to tap into. Uh, I was talking to IROC um, yes, at the studio magic. one time yes. and um I had kind of fumbled my way through a, through a phone call, uh, being nervous, you know what I'm saying? And um, he was like, he kind of like spoke some confidence into me and was just like, yo, like be humble because that's cool. He was like, but you're so humble and so the shit at the same time, like you have to stand in both type of thing. Right. So, yeah, I I don't know. I feel like uh, there are still times where I'm like, damn, this shit is hot as fuck. Like saying what the fuck, you know what I mean? But right. there's always other times too where I'm like, now nah, you got to get on it. You got to keep on it. So like, um. Like when, like certain, like when you freestyle, um, I, it, it seems like you get into a different like bag. Like when you freestyle, do yeah. you purposely try every time you freestyle to say, okay, I'm trying to make sure that no nigga, no female can fuck with me. Period. Because every freestyle that I've heard of yours, it's always just cooking niggas. Like yeah. <laughs> you purposely. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love talking shit, man. What? <laughs> um, that's like the funnest part about like writing. I feel like writing songs is fun and shit like that too. But like being able to cook on a freestyle is like that shit is different. Like it's it's more fun and it's easy. Like no offense to anybody that's like be trying to do right. it. Like like damn, this shit hard. No, like this shit is so easy. So um, yeah, I've been working on like taking the comfortability that I have when I'm in my room cooking to like when I'm in front of a camera or when I'm on stage or something like that. Mm. So like, I I don't know if you notice, like I will focus on one thing in the room and I will like talk to it, you know what I'm saying? And right. try to space out and go into a whole different like realm. But yeah, rapping is fun, bro, what, you know. Yeah, rapping, rapping is um, extremely fun. Yeah, um, I love it. I wanna get into uh, one of your songs right now. Okay. Um, um, one of my favorite songs. Um, I think this was a joint you did with um with PK with PK the poet. Yeah. Um, that's one of my my favorite joint. It's a very fun video. Um, I want the Prosper Fog to hear it because um I like the way y'all y'all chemistry was on that and how y'all was rapping back and forth on that. So we about to get into this joint right now. Samara saying PK the poet. Uh, the, the cash app is open. open. Yes. 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 Yeah. Samar, that was um that's one of my favorite joints of yours. Um, I have to ask you, um, being that you're you're a, you're a whole young queen out here in these streets, uh, how how did you get into making like soulful hip hop? Because a lot of young women right now that are rapping, they really go into um maybe like the the city girls vibe, right? City girl Cardi B kind of changed that vibe of Nick. Yeah. Well. Well, Nikki was spitting like that, but I think Cardi B kind of changed everything, kind of, kind of reset female hip hop. How, yeah. how, how are you into soul like that, being so young? Um, it was actually like that was a marker event because I started on City Girl shit. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you got some City Girl songs in the oh top. Oh my god! They oh, never she City Girl songs. <laughs> those never need to come to light. Never need to come to light. Um. <laughs> Cause at first I did it for fun and I like to talk shit. So, um, so I was doing it more so like trying to come from like, like a, like a Trina, you know what I mean? A little Kim type of, you know right. what I mean? I was just saying some nasty shit. And mm. I noticed that that wasn't even who I was, you know what I'm saying? So like, even as I got older, I was like, you know, trying to like force something and it sounded even like it wasn't me, you know what I mean? So, um, I actually, I, in 
what was that, 2020? In 2020, I went to LA on like a music tip, on a music opportunity. Okay. Um, and like, I was doing like boom bap type of rap as well, like on the other side, because I just like to write stories, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But my main thing was like the city girl flow. And um, <laughs> and uh, I went out to LA and I left my creative friends to kind of um, hang out with some people that I knew from, from school. And, um, and I was in an armed home invasion. And um, I got like beat up pretty bad. You was and, in a home invasion. Yes. Oh shit. And yeah, and it like um, it like shook me a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. While I was in that, um, my friends that I had left uh, ended up going to Soho House in LA, Soho Warehouse, and they ended up meeting like members of Dreamville. They met Ari Lennox and Earth Gang. Okay. And they didn't meet J Cole, but um. But still, those are amazing people. Like we went out there for you know music opportunities and that type of thing. And then at, like as soon as I decided to break off, I'm just wrong place, wrong time in this crazy incident. And um and they got this opportunity that I had went there for. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, damn, like, and it made me think about what the hell am I doing? You know what I, I mean? Look, like yeah, hanging out with these, yeah, yeah, these scamming ass niggas. Like what? Like what are you doing? Like where where are your values at right now? Because you came out here for a reason. And what are you, like? Why did you even go do that? You know what I'm saying? Right. So when I came back, I went to Poetic Soul. That was the first place I went um, that was like a public place. Because, you know, after something like that, like my anxiety was high. Like I had some PTSD. Like um, I lived by myself at the time, too. So when I came back home, I was like real shook. And um, I waited for my face to heal up. And I went to Poetic Soul. And I cried. I was inspired. You know what I mean? By the uh -huh. folks there. And I went home and I tried to like take a different approach. And it wasn't even on purpose. It's just what came out. Um, you, just, me, like, just, you, did, you did it from the soul. Yeah. Yeah. And that sparked like more of like a neo soul, like storytelling. Um, I still do boom bap type of stuff, but it comes from a different place now. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I wrote this song called, um, the first song I wrote after that incident was called Lemonade. And I never released it. But I perform it a lot, and oh, people really fuck with it. Yeah, people really fuck with that song, um, and I couldn't talk about what happened, but I was able to like personify my music because I felt kind of betrayed by my music almost because Why it was like mean? because I was trying to approach it from like this raw raw like aspect, like I thought you was for me type of thing. You know what I mean? I went out there for you. Okay. As in my music, I went out there for you and trying to fit into like this lifestyle got me fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, um, and then on top of that, you went and got with all my homies. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You're gassing up all these people on online that got the ass and titties and is talking to rah rah. Like, like, I felt, I felt some Wait, type so of you're way. talking about music, right? Like, yeah, the, you're using music as like a metaphor, yeah. as like, like your man, like, like a boyfriend. Like a right? Oh, okay. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Lemonade, it sounds like I got cheated on by a man or something like that. I tell people all the time when I perform, I was like, a lot of people think this song is about a boy. You know, it ain't about no fucking boy. And then the crowd laugh. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, let's get into it. I'll tell them what it's about. And it's like, oh, shit. It's actually about some like, bro, shit. You know what I mean? So. Damn, that's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, hold up. Hold up. So Mara said you really are different. God Thank damn. You. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. you ain't you ain't never recorded that like re studio recorded it? I recorded it. Um I bought the beat and everything like I recorded it um in 2020 and that was when I was first tapping into neo song and things like that. So I hadn't really found my sound. My, like my my delivery was there and I've always had like a good cadence, but um even standing in the studio and spitting that shit with other people in the studio, I was shaking the whole yeah. time. Like you can hear it in my in my voice, and and I do have like more of like a high like soft voice, and right. um, the, a lot of the songs that I made at the beginning of twenty twenty um, that were dipping into neo so they're great songs and like they're great lyrics, but something about like the perfectionism in me is kind of like I don't even like the way I sound on those. Like I I want to give them um, the quality that they deserve. I feel like, and so um, right. I've re-recorded since then, 
but the feeling is different now because I've great like I I feel like I've healed from those traumas. You know what I'm saying? So it's like no. um yeah, I just want to give it what it deserves. I haven't found that yet. Is music is music a form of therapy for you? Yes. And that's what it started out as. I remember being like cuz in high school, I used to make fun of SoundCloud niggas like I used to make fun of SoundCloud like rap. Oh, trust you know me me saying? too. I, I didn't like niggas with mixtape hands at all. Niggas had mixtape hands. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for real. It is like, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, once I got to college, I did it for fun with the homies one night. And then they were like, damn, so that's actually low-key good. You know what I mean? And then I started doing it for fun. Like, I, I was in college going to school full-time, working two jobs. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. when at the end of the day, like, I just want to chill. I want to, like, almost dissociate from, like, what's going on and, like, kind of enter, like, a, a different world. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like writing, storytelling, and things like that, it takes you there. Yeah. So it's like, you know what I mean? Or if I'm feeling something, I live by myself for two years. You know what I mean? Like straight out of coming out of my parents' house. So it's like, I'm talking to the walls. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. if I put it down in a story or like I try to piece it together like a puzzle or something like that, it's productive. And then I get the feeling out because it's on the paper now. So it's like, uh, yeah. Mm. Do you, um to, to write, do you have to be inspired to write or are you just somebody that's right to write? Um, Yes. And you have to be inspired to like write something. Okay. I do. Yeah. Inspired. But a lot of things like can be inspiration, whether it's like, um, I used to find that like going to other people's shows or even going to like listening to other people's stuff, like watching the Kanye documentary, like, Hell the other yeah. day. and I mean the kind, let me, let me put a disclaimer out too, because the documentary was amazing. The yeah, documentary yeah. was amazing, but it still doesn't excuse like his his current behavior right now, like with Kim and all that stuff that he's doing. But oh. anyway, yeah, because he acting a little, he acting <laughs> a little wild right now. <laughs> like, like scary he want his wild. family back. He wants his family back, but he's going about it the wrong way. But he wants his queen yeah. back. That we'll say that for another conversation. Yeah, 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 that's a different thing. But um, but yes, things like that. Even like um. Uh, I smoke weed, <laughs> like. So. You smoke weed? What is what is your favorite? Uh, are you a, a, a sativa or indica? Which one so, are you? I'm a sativa smoker, and I've also yeah. found that like flower. Uh, as I've gotten older, flower don't really hit me the same. Like, um, I like I have anxiety and shit like that. So does everybody fucking else. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, sativa, and then I normally get like a cartridge or like a pen. So like I can't get too high because I got shit out I gotta get done throughout the oh, day. So I have to be letting a vape fly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I get the pen. I get the pen. I'm not gonna lie. Cause the flower put my ass to sleep. I'm like, uh, I can't even do this shit no more. I'm going to sleep. It's too much of a dry high for me. Like when I when I smoke a vape, I don't know. It just I don't know. It it feels like I'm I'm smoking something from the government. I have to get the flower. <laughs> it just feels like a government I mean high. <laughs> I've never heard that before, but that's hilarious. It feels like I'm smoking something from the government. Yeah, it feels like the IRS is leaning on me when I smoke it. I'm um, weak. It almost puts a compressor on my high. Oh, for, for my music heads, y'all know what I'm talking about. It puts like a limiter on my high, so I can't get too high. On the flower, I'll fuck around and be like... Zoned out, huh? Zoned out, couch lock. What's the, uh, what's, <laughs> what's the writing process like? Uh, do you Do you like... When you hear the beat, are you writing before you hear a beat and you put something on that beat? Or are you hearing the beat, creating a melody, creating a flow? What what's what's the Samara Sin process? Um, most of the time I hear the beat first. Okay. Um, and then I begin writing to it. Um, I'll put the LEDs on. Blue is my vibe whenever I'm writing. <laughs> and um <laughs> I'll put it on, I'll put this shit in the speakers and just knock the shit until I feel something coming. Sometimes it don't come. Sometimes I'll write random bars to different beats over the weeks, and then I'll find that one beat that's like, oh, this is what all that was for. This is what all that writer's block that I thought it was was for. Right. And then I piece all that shit together, and I'm like, ooh, yeah, okay, this fits on this right here. Okay. I've been making beats recently, too. Yeah, we. So, I definitely want to get into that. Um, yeah. But I want to, because um, this was a different kind of... Um, I was like, did she do this just to show niggas like she can uh just spit and get on like some um up tempo type shit? The shit with you and uh Fredo is it Fredo? Fredo, yeah, Fredo, Fredo Leon. Uh, this one you was talking that talk on here. You was talking about dusty <laughs> niggas. Um, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, 
Let's get into that joint right now. Okay. Uh, and hey, just get it. Samara said she was cooking on this joint, y'all. Y'all let the, 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 the cash app is open. The cash app is open. Yes. Samara said you have cash app? I do. What is your cash app? The Prosper Fog loves to donate. This is the uh, support era. Please hit Samara says cash app. What's your cash app? <laughs> My cash app is dollar sign Samara Sin. Hey, oh, hit the cash that. app. <laughs> <laughs> Hit her cash app on a dog ass, and I say that uh, uh, respectfully. <laughs> um, and Samara said, "Like, do you? I don't know, cause you're so humble. You're so humble, <laughs> and, and I hate to, cause um, I've always said I'm nobody's fan. I, I'm a supporter. I don't believe in fans, cause fans are fanatics, and fans won't tell you the truth. But I'm a supporter. Um, <laughs> but I, I might sound like a fan right now, like." <laughs> Do you like? Do you know you could get on? You could get on a song with Jay Z and like hang with him. Like, you have like a the God flow. Like, what? Where does the flow come from? It's only like Joe Budden, Lupe Fiasco, Jay Z, J Cole. Um, it's only a fl- a few with like the God flow. Like, where does it come from? I listen to all of those people. <clears throat> <laughs> that's really what it is and and um i didn't listen to joe budden as much um but lupe jay-z yeah. um oh yay um freaking 50 cent even like biggie i listen to a lot of biggie and tupac i listen to slick rick um mm. that's my daddy i listen to freaking <laughs> uh special ed and fucking mc light and you know what i'm saying like yeah, I listen to all of that stuff, and really, that comes from like my family. Your family, okay. So you, um, you from Tennessee, or your mom from Tennessee? Uh, my whole family was born in Tennessee. Um, uh, my parents raised in Tennessee. I was just born there, and then we moved around a lot because my dad's military. Um, so what I call home is still Tennessee. Um, okay. but I, I don't, I can't really claim it like a Tennessee rapper born and raised in like Memphis or born and raised in Nashville or something like that. I feel like, um, even though that's where I go back home to for the holidays, my sister stay there. My mama stay there. You know what I mean? So, so yeah. That's how, so what, what was your, um, what's your Arizona connection? Um, college. I, okay. I came out. Oh, we lost her. She'll be right back. Oh, no, My I, bad, I got a phone call. Um, I came out to Arizona State University in 2017 to, to go to college. And that's the only reason I came. And then uh, I'm glad I did low key because while I was in college, I was like, why the hell did I come here? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I like it. <laughs> like, I like it. Um, I like the area and stuff. But for school, I was like, I felt duped. I was like, this is not the social experience that I thought I was going to get. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, what? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she okay. Is, she there is. There we back. go. My fault. Um, okay, so, so you said you went to ASU and you felt like you was finessed. Was it, was it not enough parties going on? Was it just trash? I know the football team was horrible. Um, what happened? <laughs> um, it was like, well, Arizona State really preaches diversity. And when I got there, I guess it wasn't the diversity that I thought it was. There are yeah, yeah, a yeah. lot of international students and it's a lot of people from um, Asia coming. And there's a lot of people from, um, you know, like Middle Eastern countries coming over and stuff like that. So it was it was diverse. You know what I mean? But I, I didn't feel like. What enough niggas out there. It wasn't yeah. no, no niggas <laughs> out there. Yeah. I was like, how do I tread lightly? <laughs> Let's be clear. It wasn't enough niggas out there. No. All you niggas was in Scottsdale on the Sea Rock. I, I agree. <laughs> yeah, basically, it wasn't the social experience that I like had uh had, that I had wanted to graduate to. But I felt like it was supposed to happen exactly how it did because that's how I ended up finding music, and I, I have some lifelong friends that you know. We type to the end type thing that I met at that school. So, um, and I got my degree. So, I mean, everything that I set out to do, I, I accomplished. And I even found like a passion along the way that was not even connected to any of the stuff that I did there. So, I guess it worked out. 
That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, people in the Prosper Fog is asking how much for a feature. I saw you on the uh, the Maddie Ice podcast on that amazing freestyle, and you said, "Was it ten bands for a feature?" Now, what's what's the feature price? What's the feature price? Ten bands? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm not charging niggas 10 bands for a feature. I was just talking my shit. I'm not gonna lie. Um honestly though, I felt like I said it on purpose to like um deter people that weren't serious from like hitting me up. Um, That's what I yeah. do all the time. If I don't if 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 it's trash, I'm gonna give you an exorbitant price because I don't want to do it. Yeah. Yeah, or I'll tell you that I don't connect to the record, and that's something that I've been um getting better about is like trying to be honest without being mean. You know what I'm saying? It's like uh, you know, I, I don't. This one don't really align with me. A lot of people send me like stuff that's like very demeaning, and I'm like, yeah, nah, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna hop on this. Like, I don't. <laughs> this doesn't align with like my values type of thing. Who's um, Samara saying that fuck shit out there? You <laughs> niggas need to be um. Uh, uh, banished. Stop <laughs> her that. You heard her flow, nigga. You trying to hop on that damn fruity little beat? I'm weak. <laughs> oh, ass niggas. Nah, but I, I charge like like five hundred dollars for like writing services and then then like features. Oh, so you ghostwrite? Um, yeah, I will. Mm, Samar got that pen too. I ain't mad at it. Um, I, I told you the most well-renowned songwriter. Period. It don't have to be for me. Mm, I, I know you. You um. You take pride in your pen. You take very much pride in your pen. I can tell the way you write. Um, now you are venturing into producing. How did you get the ear to stay? I want uh, these niggas is sending me these trash beats. Let me get on my own shit. Let me get my own beat. I'm weak. It, it actually took like a couple run-ins where. It was like I was too dependent. And that doesn't mean um, that I don't still collaborate because I still work with producers. Me and Nova Zona have a project coming. You know what I'm saying? Like he's been homie and, and that type of thing. Like, so it's not that I don't still collaborate with people because I do. Um, but it was like it just got to the point where I was like, I don't want to surf YouTube. Like I be in a writing, like inspiration type of pit. And right. then I surf YouTube for a beat. And I'm like, I don't even want to do this shit no more. Like, <laughs> this is terrible, dog. So I was like, <laughs> I was like, man, fuck it. So um, I started like trying to make beats and uh, it was actually the homie that produced Time, which is my most recent release. Uh, okay. um, his name's Zoe. Um, and he, I was in the studio with him and he was like, you can produce without having to play every instrument. Did you know that? Like that type of thing. And he kind of right. like, cause I really want to play the guitar. I really want to play the piano. You know what I mean? I was kind of letting that be like my reason for not jumping right into producing beats. And it was like, um, you can have a vision and put all the pieces together and then patch them together and right. be the producer. You like, you know what I mean? So he showed me kind of that that aspect from it. And so I was like, damn, okay, I, I'm capable type shit. Like I wasn't looking at it like that. So I went back and even like on Splice, cutting up Splice loops to make your own melodies and things uh -huh. like that. You know what I mean? Like I'll, I'll fuck around with that, you know? So I was actually doing the submission for a pitch um, to get a placement. Uh, for like this movie and I went on YouTube um, I was I had as soon as I got the pitch I hit up no I was like hey yo we gotta get in the studio like this weekend type shit the pitch is due on Monday it's Friday night you know what I mean like like we gotta tap in he was like alright bet I can meet you in tomorrow I was like word but I'm sitting there and I'm like nigga I just got the pitch like I'm over here like hype about it so I go on YouTube and I found this beat uh -huh. um, and I made a song to it and then I went to tap in to like buy the beat and homie wasn't even like he there's people all on his Instagram, like check your DM, check your DM, check your DM. I'm like, this thing is not going to respond to me in the time that I need him to respond. So I got on splice and I looked for like, you know, what I mean something that matched the vibe to the song that I wrote. And I cut up some splice loops and I played the horns and I played the beat, uh, the bass in there on my little keyboard MIDI shit. And, um, and I put this shit together. And then I recorded to it the next day. He had, said, oh, I don't need you niggas. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, oh shit, okay, like this is how you do it. Like I could try to like learn how to structure 
songs and then on the way as I continue learning instruments and stuff like that then I make stuff that's like a little bit more original and you know what I mean that I can like cultivate myself but I was like oh, okay it's not that bad you know what I mean like let me try to I'm not I'm not anywhere close to like the big homies that's been doing it for a minute know if this right. is, you know what I mean like people like that but shit this is cool for me right now like and I fucking own my shit so and you I even own some other people's shit too like yeah ship this out hey selling <laughs> beats right now how, how much your beat cost man I'm not selling them right now I'm really <laughs> just making them right now to like get on them but that's the goal for real like once I get 30 beats that I'm not using um I'll probably get a B stars and then push it on there I'm playing C's right now though I'm really trying to collaborate with like popping you know what I mean uh talented people um in the city and like how you feel about this beat you know what I'm saying <laughs> like, how, how yeah. this joint sound yeah oh, God, you know what I mean um, like, so then I get the word in you know what I mean? then they're like you know send makes beats like you can hear her up you know what I'm saying like so that's not? another hustle right there that's another hustle and another uh form of uh creativity I love it who, who produced yeah. cruising is it cruising um cruising we just been cruising on a highway uh that was uh Deshaun Morrow I found him on B Stars actually, and I hit him up. And he gave you the joint. Yeah, uh, I mean, I paid for it, and we signed a lease and everything. You know what I'm saying? But, um, but yeah, that was that was the shot moral. Ever been at a show? Have you ever have you ever been at a show and you see another artist use a YouTube beat, and then you see another artist perform the same YouTube beat? Have you ever 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 seen that? Oh my gosh, no, I haven't. <laughs> But I even had this. See, this is why I had to stop fucking with that shit because I even had somebody from high school hit me up. Right, I didn't rap in high school at all, but I had somebody from high school hit me up and was like, "Yo, like I used the same, um, I used the same sample that you used in Jealous." And mm. Michael Knight, Michael Knight has produced a lot of my songs. Michael Knight produced Jealous, um, and he slowed it down. Like it's a different, you know, he used the sample in a different way. But bro used the same sample, and I was like, I can't have niggas hitting me up like this. Like, like, I was like <laughs> let's no, go ahead and ghost this guy right now. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, let's you can't get the ghost like this. <laughs> Well, let's let's get into cruiser right now. Um, okay. This is an amazing visual, amazing video. Prosper Fall, check the cash app. Hold on, somebody post her cash app again so I can uh, put a star on there. If y'all get tomorrow seeing cash app yet. She's an uh, a independent artist out here in these streets. She needs some uh, some beat equipment. Oh, wait. Oh, God. Hey, somebody sent me $10. Thank you so much, Rhea. I really they appreciate you, it. You, you making money on the Atrix. <laughs> cash app is open. We make money on the Hatrix. Salute to, salute to you. Um have you have you ever went uh really cruising on a highway with with you and your homegirls and uh possibly stole from a convenience store like Quick Trip? <laughs> I have um, a Quick Trip all the time. I don't steal. Oh, okay. On camera, so <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I don't. I don't steal. But I've I've had countless road trips, bro. Like I'm a military kid, and like that's what we do. So, um. Uh, there's a funny story actually behind that song and the reason that that whole thing came to light that was my first time like really singing through an entire song and I was in the studio <laughs> I was just starting out so like um, and especially with singing right. to me r rapping is easy yo thank you so much for the people that are sending money into my cash app oh you know so you want to have just a real nigga show right here I <laughs> The, the cash, the, the, the cash app is open. <laughs> no, nah, but um, I got in the studio and I was nervous because I was singing, so I was like subconscious about it, and um, I was trying to push through it. And if you listen to the song, like I'm saying the same shit over and over again. <laughs> like right. at the end, even when I was like, "All right, just run it back," like you know what I mean. Like that was real frustration, and I was in there like, yeah. "I don't like the way it sounds." So. I felt like when I put when I put the EP together, I was like, I, I'm gonna make a video to this song specifically because I feel like this is my weakest joint. And it ended mm. up like a lot of people really fucked with it. So I was like, damn, like, all right, let me get back in my bag. Let me find where my where my ego is at in a good way, like where my confidence is at. Right. Like, pushing through and continue to sing and try to find my sound that way. 
That's what's that's what's I love that EP. I love that joint right now. Um ex- explain explain that joint because that that's a um that that's that's an amazing song. Like if, if we could just be in this moment right now, because a lot of people in relationships they they thinking about Instagram, they think the grass is green on the other side, they going through bills, but you were saying let's just be in this moment right now. What was the inspiration behind that joint? Um, it was about a nigga. <laughs> Oh, it's about a nigga in these streets. <laughs> the, the cash app is. I hate saying that because it makes me feel like I'm not a gangster. But, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was about a nigga. And uh, I remember we was cuddled up, bro. And he was like, he he said to me, he was like, yo, how long do you think we can keep this up? Because, because like we were both kind of like known around like people, and we were keeping it kind of like r- super low key, like. Uh, Super like, lucky. Did, did did he post you? No, no, oh, no. Man, post some Mars. Who not posted some know, Mars right? in? Hey, hey, he fumbled a bag at the end of the day, but uh, but at in the moment, I wanted it to be that way because I didn't like people in my business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I gotta right. know that you're solid before you posting anything about me, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to get embarrassed out here in front of all these. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, hell no. Nah. So, which thank God I did because. It didn't work out, but it was like in the moment I was like, why are you even thinking about that? You know what I mean? Like, let's just enjoy in the moment. Like people are put into your life for a reason. Enjoy every encounter. And even if it's a negative encounter, it was meant to turn you into the person that you're supposed to be. The negative and the good things. It's all lessons. We don't take L's. We make lessons out of mistakes and it just keeps rolling from there. So like that's where right now came from. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Just fuck with me for right now. You feel Let's me? Just you live live let's yeah. just live in a moment. Um, I yeah. saw on Valentine's Day you took a picture of a nice uh, lovely plate. Yeah. Um uh was it was some shrimps on there? Was it lobster tails? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> I made I made Mississippi pot roast, mashed okay. potatoes, and uh green beans, like southern style green beans. Oh, okay. So you you can cook in your cooking bag? Yeah, I feel like I can create. I'm a creative, man. Okay. In any, okay. any form of the word, you feel me? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, I saw you. Um, I was on a. Uh, I was on Facebook one night, and um, somebody was recording a video, and I and um, I looked on the screen. I was like, oh shit, that's Samara. And you were at. I don't know where you were at. You. It was a live band there, and um, the sound was fucking up. And it was yeah. I was having technical difficulties, mm-hmm. and you freestyled from the time the sound was fucked up until this shit got right. Yeah. Um, and I remember when I first met you, um, you said, "Oh, I'm so nervous to perform, blase ski, and I have anxiety to perform." How in the hell did you go from that to being able to freestyle for like six or seven minutes straight <laughs> before to get the sound? I was like, "This is amazing." <laughs> Um, actually, so yeah, the, the audio on my last song was messing up. Um, I opened for this R&B singer, um, Arvin, and uh, okay. he's amazing by the way. And, um, and yeah, my, my fourth song, uh, it just wasn't playing for some reason. Like they didn't, it didn't download the right way or something like that. So, um, you know, they kept telling me to stall, stall, stall the people. I'm like, I don't want to talk to these, like, what do I say to them? Right, right, right. Hey, and um, salute every time your cash app. Let me know when your cash app goes off because we're gonna play um, an R&B song. This is a cash app song right here. So let me know every time the cash app. <laughs> the cash app is open. <laughs> the cash app is open. Yes, 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 dude. Um, <laughs> Finish okay, I'm so sorry. Okay. So, yeah, the sound was messing up, and I told the crowd, I was like, "Man, he keep telling me to start with y'all." I was like, "But like, I'm a poet. I'm I'm not a stand up comedian. Like, I don't know what to yeah. say to you guys." And um, one of the ladies in the back was like, "Do a poem." So I was <laughs> like, "Shit, but So that's what that was like. Um, it wasn't off the top or anything like that. Like that was a pre written Like I performed that before. Okay. Um, but yeah, I needed something to fit into that that little that little area. So 
I just dropped some bars real quick. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was amazing. Um, how how was you performing at uh, ASU? Um, I forgot the guy that you opened up for, but I saw you. Your documentary, it was amazing. Um, I, I dropped, uh, I almost dropped some um, thug tears. My allergies was acting up when <laughs> you were saying, like, oh, my God, I finally get to pay the band. Like, yeah. you said, I, normally I don't get to pay y'all, but I finally get to pay y'all. How was that experience? Oh, my gosh. Um, so the band that I normally perform with, they're called the Classmates. Um, yes. And Jay-Z. they're from Detroit. Yeah, yeah, JC's, uh, Hamilton Moore, yes. uh, Mo, freaking uh, Mike Williams. Uh, who am I missing? Who am I missing? Who am I missing? I think that's it right there. Uh, LC Green has been subbing in on the drums, and that's who played with us for um, the Teddy Swim show. And then I had um, the Kaleidoscope Kid play guitar with us as well. And I've been playing shows with them. The first show I played with them was for Arizona State as well for a different thing. Um, I performed at a show for their Black History Month. Okay. And um, and that's when I first met them at rehearsal. And uh, they're all um, they're all like big brothers. Um, they really care about my success um, as I do theirs. And uh, they really helped me get a little bit more comfortable because that was my first time kind of working with a band in that manner. And uh, they're they've been they've been a band and making music with each other since 1998, yes. which is the year I was born. Yes. You yes. know what I'm saying? Class so, makes me fire. Oh my gosh! Yeah, oh my I'm, gosh! They make me sound so good. <laughs> you met, uh, Stevie Thunder. No, he, he, he's a lost member of the classmates. He's in Detroit right now, uh, but him and Jay Cz are cousins. Um, he's an, he's an amazing producer as well. Um, I got to link y'all together. Like he's nice on the hooks, a nice writer. I think y'all can make some uh, beautiful art together. Yeah, how do you, how do you like performing with the band as opposed to just perform with a DJ? Um, well, the energy is different already. You know okay. what I'm saying? And normally the sound is different too. With the band, like now that we've gone like a whole year doing consistent shows with each other, you know what I mean? Um. Now, like, we all kind of work very well together. And so it's like, um, even with my tracks, like, when they kind of slow the tracks down, which is nice, you know what I'm saying? Right. And the tracks are a little bit different than just how they are with, like, my vocal, like, my backup vocals on them or, like, just with the open track. Right. So not only is it slowed down, but we can play with the show. You know what I mean? We headlined um, Valley Bar in November. And, mm. um, and... I got to put like my own show together. I'm like, man, this is my headline. You know, I'm doing whatever I want. You know what I mean? I'm telling my story, you know? Right. So, um, man, I got to throw in a bunch of different, even like cover songs in between my verses. I did, uh, we were able to do, uh, if I ruled the world, but I put my own verse over it, you know what I mean? And then freaking Mike be going crazy on the bass. It just gives it a different groove, you know? And right. people can even rock out to the band. I don't have to talk the whole time. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's not so like, get you the song. Tell- Fast, yeah. Like, yeah. I try to tell artists like when you have a live band, like you your show could be absolutely fucking crazy. Beats can drop, like you said, cover songs, live instrumentation is just the next, next, next motherfucking level. Just yeah. amazing. Yeah. And yeah, you have a lot more room for creativity, and it's not just your own creativity, it's everybody's creativity. Um, Mike would put like Mike would put a freaking bass line of like an Aaliyah song underneath one of my songs. Fire. And it's like, this is great. Like I would never have thought to do that where C's would play, you know what I mean? Like something from Erica Badu in a song that was mine. And it was like, it just sounds, it, it adds to the vibe completely. And then it also includes all types of people to be able to enjoy the music. Um, you know what I mean? So right. yeah. That's They're amazing. Shout out to them. Shout out to the classmates. Yeah, shout out to the classmates. They they an entire vibe out there. Um, I want to ask you some local hip hop questions. Um, okay. Who are you? Um, as far as uh, female MCs, um, are you? Are you, can you give me top three that you like right now? As far as outside of yourself, like female rappers out here in Arizona. Uh, top three, Lex. <clears throat> She's fine. I was, I was sleep on her. I was a whole ass nigga. I was, I was too. No, yeah. I was too. I I didn't even. I didn't know at first, but I looked through her whole page. I was like, damn. Yeah. Damn. She rap rap. I was she making rap, a mistake face to her <laughs> shit. I was like, ugh, shorty. Yeah. Damn. 
Yeah, she ran. Um, yeah, I just had this. I just seen this one girl. Um, she freestyled and uh, she she fumbled over her words a couple times, but she was a vibe still, and she was spinning. Her name's Indy. Um, she's under like Cream City Entertainment. She's she's very new. Oh. Um, she's very new, but I think I think she's dope. Um, who else? You like Jada Pink? Oh yeah, Jada Pink, man. What? Yeah, yeah. Jada Pink, Jada Pink, and Bossy. Bossy be spitting too. That, yeah, that's a different. That's a different lane as far as like style of music, drama of music. You know what I mean? Right. But Jada's doing her thing. She got that song, uh, Diddy, that just came out. Right. She's over here rehearsing for new music videos and things like that. She's a vibe in person too. Like she's very sweet. Um, she's very supportive. You know what I mean? Which is nice because like. Women in general, they are kind of catty. You know what I mean? Right. Like, they get like it's, it's more of like a competition thing, especially just music in general. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, we are competing to like, but that's not true. Like, we're competing against, against our own potential, and, um, and it's nice and refreshing when you're around other people that feel the same way. You know what I mean about that? And there's like, yeah, nah, do your shit. You know what I mean, bossy, me and bossy, do your shit. You know what I'm saying? Like. Right. Everybody is here to with the with a similar goal, but there's room for all of us. You know what I mean? It's just about who's gonna put in the hardest amount of work and like get their shit right. So get it yeah. right, get it right. Would you um uh, would you ever uh do a song with Merkums? Yeah, I would. I would love to hear that shit. That shit might be crazy. That I, shit I, might be crazy. I'll tell you Y'all got a song together? I'll tell you a secret. We we uh, are working on something. Um, <laughs> I don't know. The cash app is, is open. Out, but we've been we've been talking to each other a bit, so. Oh, that'd be crazy. Um, I heard um a record that Dom two times played on this show of you and him, yeah. um, which was absolutely amazing. It was some. It was like a storytelling song. I need a vent. Yeah, I need a vent. I was like, God damn, this shit is creative. This shit, this shit was incredible. Um, I know you work with the uh we well, using the video for the real Kyrie, which was an um amazing uh yeah. video that he just dropped. Mm -hmm. Um I know you work with Nov the Zoner over there. Yeah. Uh what other features do you have in the tuck right now? Can we get any any features that you have right now? Collaborations. Um Nov. I do a lot of producer collaborations. Okay. Um I don't have I don't have anybody on my songs. Oh, just you. <laughs> yeah. Nigga, niggas can't get on your records. How come these can't get on the song? <laughs> oh, wait. Um, a lot of the features that I do do are like for other people. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. It's like it's not my music. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, somebody hit me up and I was like, damn, that was fire. You know what I mean? I'm I'm working on something with Alexis um right now too. Um, oh shit. Yeah, yeah. Um me and Delhi every day have have something. I'm I'm only I'm only in it for like the last eight bars or something like that. I just feel like a poetry piece at the end. But that's they spazzed on that song. Um, it was Delhi every day and uh, Nate Jetson. Oh, uh, kind of singing the melodies yeah. in it. Oh my gosh, the song was so amazing. I came in like the last twenty minutes of the session, wrote like some real quick fifteen minutes, and then went in there recorded it. And um, man, it was a vibe in there that day for sure. Um. But but there are things like that that are going on. Um, but I've been so like trying to figure out myself that uh, that I haven't um, aside from Merkums because I reached out to Merkums um, okay. and then know the owner. I I reached out to him too, of course. You know what I mean? We do producer stuff. Like he produces um a, a few of my tracks as well. So like uh, I, I reached out to him to get on my tracks. Um, That's, I would love to hear you and J Rob the Chief on a song together. Yeah. Um, I think that'd be amazing. Both y'all um very talented. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to get into the song Time. Um, I have to ask you, who in the hell is not giving Samara Sin time? Who 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 is not giving Samara Sin time? I was like, she's capping on this song. I know that this, this thirst is flying with no remorse, cold red thirst, cold blue. <laughs> Who was not giving some hearts in time? Man. That was an amazing video. Explain how y'all did that video. God damn, that was an amazing video. That video was like, man, I put a lot of effort into that video. I can tell. And um, shout out to Ronnie. Shout out to Flix Photography. He's the same person. Um, but he produces, uh, uh, he produces tracks for me. He's very talented human being. Very freaking all around talented human being. He shot the video. Um, 
he produced um, right now. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, on his, yeah. yeah, and he we have a, a few records um, as well in the vault, like producer producer collaboration right there again. Okay. Um, and uh, I wrote out almost every detail to that damn video and i put a team together to execute that video i bought i was in goodwill buying props spray painting props before the video oh, so you like was, you was cooking on that you yeah cooking. man like it's all goes into like being a creative and like leading my creative direction and um and when I pitched it to Ronnie, it was like, Ronnie was like, hell yeah, like this looks dope. You know what I mean? You might need an extra scene or like he gives me what he sees from his like having the video eye. You know what I mean? Like, right. you know, this angle might be good here or something like that. Um, in other places, I'm like, I want it to be from this angle. I want it to look like this. And then, you know, we just teamed up. Um, Kyrie is like the, the male uh, actor in that right. uh, video. Um, the idea to have his uh, face not really be in it um, was intentional and uh, he executed very good. It was a very fun set day. It was long and uh, everybody held on and you know what I mean? Like did their part and played their role. And um, you know, it was a, it was very fun and I'm very happy about the way that it turned out. Yeah. Let's it showed it my mind. personality I feel like a little bit more than uh, my other videos. Yeah, let's get into that record right now. Time, um, amazing video, amazing visual, amazing song. Uh, yes, that was Time by Samar Sin. Amazing record. Um, is that uh, one of your love languages, Samar? Is time? Quality um, time? Yeah, I like quality time. You know what I'm saying? I feel like there there is a love language that we prefer over all the others, right? But it's a balance of all of them. So mm. it could be, you know, doing great on like affirmations and like right. like speaking that, but then if you're never here, then what does that mean? You know what I mean? If you're not right. with action and things like that, like there's a balance of all of that. And it's important to understand what your love language is, but also understand what your partner's love language is. So you're showing up for them in the same space that they're showing up for you. Hundred percent. Talk that talk. Yeah. I gotta have you come back on here for Toxic Tuesdays. We need <laughs> to talk over there. Core DJ, I, she just be so toxic. I just be trying to talk to her. <laughs> oh, just, I just need some uh, so a voice of reason out there for yeah. Core DJ. I. Uh, oh, <laughs> um, and, and real quick too, shout out yeah. Flix Photography. Um, he's he's busy as hell. He's working, but um, you want some some real shit to come together. His edits are crazy. Like his filming is crazy. So. Uh, he deserves like flowers for sure. That's what's up. So, yeah. um, I want to know final final question. Okay, where, where do you see this? Where do you want to take this music shit? Do you want to be signed to a major label? Do you want to be independent? Were you just doing your own personal tour? You get you a van like futuristic and drive around the city, <laughs> collect the back. Where do you eventually want to take this? Because I see, I see Grammys. You're 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 a Grammy artist. Thank you. You're one of those artists. You're gonna, you're gonna have a Lauren Hill night where you're gonna be you're gonna be holding seven motherfucking Grammys. Where do you see yourself taking it? Thank you for saying that. Um, I can see that for myself for sure. I can mm. see that for myself. Um, the route to get there um, doesn't matter. I think, but um, the end goal, like I said, I said it twice already. Um, I want to be the most well-renowned songwriter of all time, and mm. um whether that means that I'm just a songwriter, whether that means I'm an artist, I'm always going to make music. Um, you know what I mean? But I do see longevity in my career. I see it, um, you know, going on for a long time and rippling out to, to touch people. And you know what I'm saying? Like possibly help other people's careers eventually and things like that. So um, longevity, my pen is going to live forever. And that's, right. that's my goal. So, yeah. That's what's up. Um, I, I wish you the best. I know you're going to be successful. I appreciate you for giving me this interview here on the Hatrix. Uh, I know the Prosper Fall, they definitely enjoyed you. They were sending you money. They was letting the cash app flourish on you. Um, and thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, inviting me out. Like, I really appreciate it. Um, you're hilarious, bro. Like, your thank platform you. is thank dope. You. And, um, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Thank you to everybody in the comments that was commenting and showing love, sending money. Like, I appreciate that. Like, that's fun. So thank you for having me on here. I had a great conversation. Like, this was this is a great, great time. 
Thank you. You always welcome back on a Hatrix. Continue to flourish. Any uh, exclusives of music, do send them uh, my way. We definitely appreciate you for supporting uh, Black Media out here. Uh, any where can they find you? Find you at on all social media platforms. Yeah, social media. I actually put it in my like my name down here, but social media on Instagram, you can find me at the Samara Sin, um, and then Sin C Y N because I'm a child of the word. Um, you can find me on all digital streaming platforms under Samara Sin C Y N, um, Facebook Samara Sin. No, uh, it's pretty connected. Cash App Samara Sin. Feel me like you can find hey, me under you. everything. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, you have a great rest of the day, and I, um, I'll chop this up and have this up for you. Thank you. Okay, sounds good. Bye, y'all. Hey, one hundred.